shall we begin? Hey guys, welcome to vlog 19 and welcome to Phnom Penh here in Cambodia. I am back in my favourite place in Cambodia for my last two weeks while I'm in this country. Um, what is new? Well, I got my hair cut. Um, I went down my street the other day, Street 396. Um, there's a cute little barber shop right at the end. Uh, we had a few communication issues where I didn't speak very much Khmer and he didn't speak great English, but I basically told him cut my hair in half, which he did. Um, and it only cost two dollars, so that was pretty cool. Um, the last time I saw you guys, I was actually on Koh Rong Island here in the southwest of Cambodia. And I was kind of just relaxing into island life and you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but actually the next day after I uploaded that video, uh, I got really, really sick and I spent most of my time in the bathroom. And in fact, I got really bad food poisoning, probably the worst food poisoning I've ever had. Um, and I spent my last week of my time on Karang Island basically sick in bed. So I didn't make you guys a video last week because I wasn't really well enough and also because I don't think it will make that exciting viewing too. Um, but in this week's vlog, uh, in a moment I'm going to show you a little bit of just walking around Phnom Penh. You know, it's one of my most favourite things to do. Just go outside, no plan, walk around the streets, stop and say hello to the local people, play with the kids and football, whatever it might be, you know, that kind of stuff. So I just want to show you a typical bit of normal everyday non pen life. Um, and then I'm also going to visit the S21 Genocide Museum, which is a huge, huge part of Cambodia's recent history um, and an important story to learn and to share with you guys. So I hope you can appreciate that. Um, actually, in about 10 minutes, I'm running really late. Sorry, Alex, if you're watching this. Um, I'm about to go and meet my friend Alex, uh, who is a French-Cambodian uh, local guide here in Phnom Penh, and also a travel blogger. And she wants to interview me about my time and my two months spent in Cambodia, and what I thought about that. So I really better go, because I'm going to be super late. But guys, here's a little bit of Phnom Penh. I hope you guys like it. So, just walking down my street. Uh, this is Street 396, where I live. You've just seen me kind of walk out the apartment. And now we're gonna keep walking on, about an hour walk across the city, until we get to Wat Nom. Um, and then we're gonna have a little look around there and show you around a bit more. really like one of my favorite things to do in Phnom Penh is just to really walk around the local areas and just experience local life you know um, just get lost in these tiny little streets these tiny little alleyways and just really uh, soak it up you know it's just amazing hello 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye. bye, bye. <laughs> oh no. We're coming. Bye bye. So that was a nice moment, really typical in Phnom Penh and Cambodia, but I think even more so in Phnom Penh is that when you're walking down the streets, you come past these like kind of little doors and windows, and these children start creeping out and they start waving. 
and they start smiling and they get a bit braver every few seconds. It's so nice to interact with them and just to have some fun with them, wave at them and just, yeah, take some photos with them. In fact, I let the, the older boy take a few photographs and one of them was pretty good. So, you know, maybe he could be a good photographer someday. Okay guys, so one thing I've really been noticing um, is that it's almost December already. I mean, when you're traveling so often and for so long, you kind of lose track of the day, the month and week and all that kind of stuff. But I've just been noticing around even in Phnom Penh here, um, Christmas decorations are beginning to come out. There's some Christmas lights hanging off a lot of the trees and the uh, streets. And uh, a lot of the shops are starting to get their Christmas decorations in, which is kind of cool. Kind of scary where the year's gone, but yeah. One of my favorite things in Phnom Penh is this little place right here, because I can get some strawberry sorbet some dairy-free ice cream, basically. Uh, so I'm gonna go in and go check it out. So good. So good. I came here in my first week in Phnom Penh. It was raining so hard and I was looking for any shelter. And I saw this place and I thought, I wonder, do they have any ice cream without any dairy or milk in it? Because, you know, I'm vegan. And I came in and they had this stuff. And it's so good. And I haven't had any since the first week I was here. So here we go. In my last week in Phnom Penh, um, I returned back to where it all started here at Swenson's uh, gelato ice cream you know, cafe, diner, place thing. Hmm. Okay guys, so we're having a slight change of plan today. Um, I'm not gonna make it to the And I'm a long way from Wat Nom, the Buddhist temple. So I'm gonna go and explore wherever I am right now. Um, there's a market over here called Orasi Market. And I haven't actually been in there yet. So maybe it's just like uh, the other two markets, the Russian market and the Central Market maybe. Um, probably the same stuff, but I've never been, so let's go have a look and check that out. This place is huge, so there's three floors and they're all absolutely giant. Each floor is like a huge market in itself. It's like three ginormous markets stacked on top of each other. Hey guys, so I walked around the market for a little while. It's kind of just, you know, household stuff, clothes and toiletries, shoes, usual kind of stuff. I don't really need anything and I need to save my money. But in the building the market is in, there's about two or three floors, as I said earlier, of market. And then on the fourth and fifth floor, as you go up to the top, it's basically like the car park and a roof. Um, and there's these amazing panoramic views of Phnom Penh from the roof. So it's rush hour downstairs and lazy hour right here. So I'm just gonna soak in the views of Phnom Penh before I go and get some dinner. Good morning guys, um, it's bright and early, it's actually 9.25am and I'm ready to go out the door. I haven't even had a coffee yet but I'm quite keen to get to a place I'm going to visit quite early before too many visitors arrive. Um, where am I going to go? I'm actually going to go and visit the Phnom Penh Genocide Museum which was a former school where the Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot's regime used to hold captive prisoners and torture them and all kinds of horrible things. Um, I want to tell you a bit more about that in a little more detail as we go along. Khmer Rouge were the movement led by Pol Pot, who in 1975 to 1980 swept to power in Cambodia. 
anyone that was considered a threat to the regime, such as academics, doctors, actors and many innocent people were held captive and tortured until they provided false confessions. They would then be taken to the killing fields for execution. The Khmer Rouge also believed that children of victims could grow to seek revenge against Pol Pot's regime, and so entire generations of families were executed. S-21 here in Phnom Penh was the most notorious torture prison of many that were all across Cambodia during that time. They believe an estimated 15 to 20,000 people were held here, and the same number were executed. When S-21 was liberated by the Vietnamese in 1979 during the liberation of Phnom Penh, there were just seven survivors left. Okay guys, so I'm just on my way to meet Alex right now. Um, it's in a place called Sundown Social Club, which I believe has really good views of uh, the local market. So let's go check that out. Okay guys, so I believe if we uh, take a left about here right now, we should pretty much be there. It's a gorgeous sunny day in Phnom Penh. Okay, so hi, I'm Alex, I'm French, but uh, I, I, I have lived for eight years in Brazil, then eight years in Paris, then one year in Africa, and now I'm in Phnom Penh for, for yeah, it has been one year. I would say that it's kind of the Asian city you want to see if you dream about Asia in your life, because Nowadays, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur is such a modern, big city. They kind of they, they are missing a, something when you go there. If you could uh, sum up Phnom Penh in three words, what would they be? In three in three words, okay. Um, I would say casual. I would say hot. <laughs> And I would say colorful. And what's the funniest thing you've ever seen in Phnom Penh? Uh, a dog uh, uh, driving a motorcycle. An actual <laughs> dog had his two poles on the on the front in the front, and the guy was on the phone. And I swear, I swear, this is true. The dog was driving. I swear, <laughs> it was plain afternoon so I wasn't drunk <laughs> I saw it was a big dog like I think it was a Labrador or something I swear the dog was driving the motorcycle so you know in Asia the uh, motorcycle is so important that they even taught their dog to drive it Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, that's the end of this week's vlog. If you guys liked it, leave a thumbs up and a comment down below. Um, and feel free to subscribe. Um, in the meantime, that's the end of this week's vlog and also the end of my time here in Cambodia. 
Cambodia has been fantastic and a complete like roller coaster of a trip. Um, non Pen has totally stolen my heart and I have to come back here very soon. But my second visa runs out next week and I have to start moving on to new places. So come back next week and find out where I am. In the meantime, guys, have a great week and a great weekend. And as they say in Non Pen, au revoir.